Can you microwave your machine embroidery? And why would you want to? I'm going to show you everything you need to know for making great gifts that are safe and warm and give you a free design too. Hey folks, I'm Lucy at Ballyhoo Creations where I design in the hoop projects that are robo stitched with your embroidery machine. Whether you've sewn microwavable items before or maybe you've never heard of them, this video will tell you everything you need to know about safely microwaving your stitched projects. You cannot use polyester embroidery thread for this, but I'll show you what you can use instead. It doesn't matter what size of embroidery machine you have, this will apply to any machine. I'm going to show you some great gifts that are perfect for winter giving. I've researched and tested all the rules, and I'm going to show you how to modify your machine embroidery projects so they can safely be run through the microwave. It is extremely important that you follow all the safety tips I'm going to share. Otherwise, you're just making a fire hazard and nobody wants that as a gift. At least nobody I want to give stuff to. Why in the world would you want to microwave your embroidery designs? I will give you three reasons. Bowl cozies, microwave potato bakers, and heat packs, or what I like to call foot warmers. A bowl cozy is just a sewn item that snuggles around a hot bowl of soup or even a cold bowl of ice cream. It's like a hot pad that's shaped like a bowl. This one is actually rectangular shaped for my casserole dishes that I microwave all the time. And you can microwave it and then pull the bowl out of the microwave using the, the sewn item instead of handling the hot dish. Potato bakers are similar, but they're bag shaped. I like the convenience of microwaving my baked potatoes, but my husband doesn't like how the potato skin comes out. And these bags hold the moisture enough in the potato, so it solves that problem. It gives you a nice baked potato. And then we have heat packs. Most people think of these as something for sore muscles, or you use them when you're not feeling well, and they are great for that. But my favorite use for a heating pack is those cold winter nights when your feet are freezing. You put a microwave heat pack at your feet and it is the most luxurious thing on a chilly night or a day. I even rest my feet on them sometimes when it's super cold and the wood floors in my house, I have an old house, the floors are freezing. And since there's no cords or electricity, you, your pets might even like to snuggle with them too. So you can make small hand warmers for your pockets. You can make these bags for your feet. You can make them bigger or smaller. Lots of uses for the heat packs. Your fabric should be 100% cotton. You could use other natural fibers like wool or silk, but those can smell bad when heated. So stick with cotton or even linen. Just make sure somewhere on the label of your fabric, it says 100% cotton. And if you have fabrics that are sitting around that you no longer know if they're cotton or not, then don't use them. You need to be 100% sure that it's 100% cotton or linen. Even on this one here, these are just fabric samples that a friend gave to me, but it's got 100% cotton on there. So I know what the fabric is. And also make sure you're buying your fabric from a reputable source so that you know it is what they say it is. There are some places that I've purchased online that said they were a particular fiber. And I know through doing a burn test that they weren't, they were synthetic and you cannot use synthetics in the microwave. So buy from a reputable source, make sure it says 100% cotton or linen or whatever natural fiber you're using. And I also like to pre-wash my fabrics before I use them in microwavable stuff, just to make sure that any sizing or chemical treatment is removed before I'm using it. For your thread, the best thing to use is cotton thread intended for machine quilting. These cotton threads are made for long arm quilting machines that stitch at high speeds just like our embroidery machines. So it will do fine in your embroidery machine. Look for 100% cotton. These might be a 30 weight thread, which is a little bit um, thicker than our regular 40 weight polyester or it might even be a 50 weight, which is thinner. These thinner threads could make your design look a bit different, but not too much. You could also use a rayon or a silk thread, but it's easier to find these cottons. If you're not 100% sure that it is 100% natural fiber on your thread, don't use it, it's too risky. And this is super important. Your bobbin thread also needs to be your 100% cotton. You can wind a bobbin with your top thread, or you can get cotton bobbin thread if you need a lot of it. Check out Superior Threads or Aurafil. 
They have cotton bobbin thread because that's the standard in the quilting world, while the machine embroidery is all about our friends Polly and Esther. All right, the stabilizer is the tricky part because almost all of machine embroidery stabilizer is polyester, but there are cotton stabilizers available. Be sure you don't use anything that has sticky or fusible on it. Those glues are not microwave safe either. My preference is the cotton soft tearaway stabilizer made by Madeira. This is one I've used on my microwave safe designs before. Or, I also just use the cotton batting, which is the next trick I'm going to tell you about. There is a cotton batting called Wrap and Zap. It's made by Pellon, and it is 100% cotton and microwave safe. So, this is what I use. You should use this for inside of your bowl cozies, your potato bakers. I also like to use it on my foot warmers because it has a snugglier feeling. It even has the uh, pattern for making the potato, they call it a baked potato zapper, and it's on the back of the package if you're wondering how to get a pattern for that. You can also use this as your stabilizer for a more open design. What do I mean by open design? Let me show you. These text designs are the freebies right here that I'm going to show you how you can download from me. And this one is an open design. The um, letters are just outlined, whereas this one has the satin stitches. And even this one I did with the just the batting as my stabilizer. It does work, but if you have even more stitches and too much density, you need to have that tearaway stabilizer. That's the cotton as well. For an applique design like this bowl cozy that I made years ago, and it's starting to show some, some stains, but eh, ignore that. This was actually done free motion embroidery and not on the um, my embroidery machine, but the concept is the same. This just has a layer of batting inside of it, and then um, the stabilizer is just the batting. Because this is open, the stitches are not too close together. There's not even that much stitching. These satin stitches here, again, it, this one's kind of, you could go either way and use the cotton soft stabilizer or just the batting. With the batting only, like on this one, you see more creasing here in between the letters and stuff. But because I'm just going to be putting my dirty old feet on this, I don't care about that. So it's up to you. That's also a way that you can save money when you're making these for gifts. Choose loose or open designs so you can use the batting as your stabilizer and not need to buy the extra 100% cotton stabilizer because it's a little more pricey than, than regular stabilizer. Whatever you do, do not use polyester or acrylic or nylon or even blends for a project that's going into the microwave. And for the love of sparkles, do not use anything metallic like metallic thread or fabric with metallic in it. It will set off a little fireworks show in your microwave. And just to prove you, I am not kidding about this safety stuff. I'm going to show you a burned one that I have. The fabric is 100% cotton flannel. I bought quilting thread for my serger, and I'm pretty sure that that's what I used, although um, this might even be polyester. I may have messed up on this, but I think what happened was I put it in without the cup of water, which is very important, and your microwave has hot spots in it, and when this was all folded up in the microwave, the parts that started burning all burned at the same time. And to show you, I microwave my sponges. Now, nothing to do with machine embroidery here, but to um, get rid of the stink on your sponges, you can microwave them for a minute. And I guess there wasn't enough water on it, or my microwave has a very severe hot spot. That had never happened to my sponges before, but for some reason, um, I actually got a new microwave and it burned the sponge. So be careful about hot spots in your microwave. Again, the cup of water when you're microwaving your heat packs will fix most of that, but all microwaves have hot spots. And if your heat pack doesn't have water in there and it's in the microwave by itself and it's in one of those hot spots, it can start scorching. So always make sure you have that water in there or something wet and also make sure that you are monitoring it and not leaving it in there for many minutes at a time. That's very important. Luckily with this one, I was keeping my eye on it or at least my nose on it because it smelled like burned popcorn. That's how I knew that there was a problem before a fire started. I just wanted to show you what happens when you don't follow all the safety precautions to make sure you understand they are important. 
As far as fillers for your heat packs, I like to use cherry pits inside my heating bags because I bought a huge bag of them years ago when I sold these at craft fairs. And the cherry pits can be machine washed. Also, they smell like cherry pie when you're um, heating them up. So they last for many years, they're machine washable, and they smell nice. So I use these, but you can also use rice or beans. You can't wash the rice or the beans, but you can create a washable and removable cover for your heating bag if you want to do that. I'll leave a link in the description box to a wonderful blog article over at A Little Crispy where she tested 12 different fillers if you want to experiment and see which one you like the best. Rice is fine, I've used that. I haven't used beans, but I like the cherry pits the best. Also, jasmine rice, basmati rice, those have a nice smell to them as well. If you wanna make some foot warmers, feel free to download my free designs for the feeder heater or the warm tootsies. It's just text that fits in a little four x four hoop. I also have some in the hoop pillow designs. Those are not free, but you can purchase them for a dollar or two, and they can be used as the heating bags rather than making them as pillows. You could also just get on your sewing machine and sew a rectangle, leave an opening in it, and use that for your bag, and then embroider whatever design you want. It could be the freebie that you get from me for the foot warmers, or it could be any of your favorite designs and put that on the pack. That's a beautiful thing to do, too. Okay, let's review because if you've forgotten any of these safety requirements, you are not ready to try these microwave embroidery projects. Always microwave your fabric goods with something wet, even if you have to put a cup of water in the microwave with your stitched item. Water is very important. Only use natural fibers for everything. This means your fabric, your thread, including the bobbin, your stabilizer, your filler, everything must be a natural fiber. Synthetics could melt and metallics will downright spark in your microwave. Don't even try it. And of course, you now know why it's useful to put your items in the microwave because bowl cozies, heat packs, potato bakers, those are all great items that people really appreciate. They make excellent gifts. So now that you know how to use natural fibers to stitch fabric gifts that you can microwave, remember to use cotton or rayon linen, never use synthetics in the microwave. I've also given you some ideas that make great gifts like heat packs, foot warmers, bowl cozies, potato bakers, Go out and make some stuff, give wonderful gifts, be safe and warm. See you later, folks.